He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to worship at and as Christ Lutheran Church on this, the second Sunday of the season of Easter. Know that you are a blessing to each other. You bless God, but most importantly, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has gathered us together to bless us in God's gospel for us today. Let us begin our worship and meditative silence, preparing our hearts and minds for Christ Jesus. Once again, I remind us that the Christ Jesus for whom we prepare is the Easter Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the out in the world Jesus, the on the loose Jesus. That means that no one and nothing ever can or will ever be the same. We pray together. Our worship continues with a liturgy for remembering God's promises in the waters of holy baptism. Water by itself is only water. But together with God's word, it is life-giving water. Giving us new life here on earth today. And in heaven one day. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues in song. That Easter day with joy was, stanzas one and four, we sing together. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you.
we pray together. Almighty God. Almighty God. With joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 John, chapters 1 and 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we may have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us all from sin, from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A proclamation of Psalm 133. Peace to God. 
Holy Gospel for this, the second Sunday of Easter, comes to us from the Gospel writer of John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered Jesus, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Friends and neighbors in Christ, in John's Gospel for us this morning, we meet Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Just listen to that for a moment. Doubting Thomas. Not a very flattering moniker, is it? At least at first consideration. In fact, doubt sounds dubious, doesn't it? especially for one of the original 12 disciples, especially for one who assumedly has faith. But let's remain patient this morning. Let's remain open-minded, let's remain hopeful, and let's remain persistent, just like the Easter people that we are. Let's listen carefully first to what doubt actually sounds like in Scripture. Let's listen to what doubt sounds like with ears of faith. Said Thomas, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Friends and neighbors in Christ, rather than criticizing Thomas for his unbelief, what if instead this morning we were to relate to and learn from? Relate to and learn from Thomas whose behavior actually proclaims that indeed the resurrected Jesus makes a profound difference in daily life. Not only 2,000 years ago, but the resurrected Jesus makes a profound difference in your daily life too. My Lord and my God, Thomas confessed, greeting now a physically resurrected Jesus with surprise and relief. Allow me then this morning for just a few more, a few moments 
to develop a positively positioned Thomas, if you will, with just a few statements. The first is this, doubt. Doubt is neither the opposite nor the antithesis to faith. Doubt is not the antithesis nor the opposite to faith. Rather, faith's enemy is self-reliance. Doubt is a feature of faith in the same way that failure is a necessary part of success. And finally, doubt simply means that faith is alive and well. Doubt simply means that your faith, that the gift of faith inspired in you by the Holy Spirit is alive and well and doing its work in this human being, in this human creature that you are. Now, while we conveniently refer to our scripture this morning as the Doubting Thomas narrative, it's also important for us to recognize who else is doing what else? Who else is doing what else? In Mark's gospel, as we recall from last week's Easter Sunday worship, both Mary's and Salome brought spices to Jesus' tomb to anoint his corpse so it wouldn't smell so bad when it rotted away. I don't know about you, but that behavior sounds more serious than doubt to me. In Luke's gospel, again, some bring spices to the tomb for the very same reason. While Simon and Cleopas had no idea they were speaking to Jesus the entire walk to Emmaus. Now, I don't know about you, but an inability to even fathom that Jesus was alive after three years of living practically every moment of every day together with Jesus, in light of the fact that Jesus had said time and time and time again he was going to Jerusalem where he would be rejected, crucified, and raised on the third day, and nobody remembers this, nobody can remember it until Jesus reveals himself in the breaking of the bread, I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot more serious to me than doubt, the moniker we hang on Thomas. And now today in John's gospel, the other 10 disciples, Judas is deceased, remember, and his replacement has not yet been named. While Thomas, the writer of John's Gospel, tells us that, Jesus, that Thomas is not there for the first encounter with Jesus for some unnamed reason, the other ten disciples of today's narrative have attempted to remove themselves from the Jesus story by locking themselves away. I don't know about you, but fear-based paralysis seems a lot more problematic than simply harboring some doubt. Indeed, we refer to today's narrative as the story of Doubting Thomas. But by all accounts, as I have just shown you, by all accounts, doubting is not such a bad thing. In fact, maybe doubt is a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing for us that Thomas has doubt. Consider this. All the other followers of Jesus seem to be afraid that Jesus is still dead. And now life is back to the way it was. Or perhaps now life is even 
worse than it ever was before they began following Jesus three years ago in the first place. You see, all the other disciples seem to be afraid that Jesus is dead. But Thomas, on the other hand, experiences a different challenge. I posit for us today that Thomas is afraid that Jesus is a lie. Let me repeat that for your consideration, for your contemplation, most hopefully for your gospel transformation today. Thomas is afraid that Jesus is a lie. Confronted with eyewitness reports of his colleagues, Thomas passionately struggles to believe, not because the news about Jesus' death is too devastating, but rather because the news of Jesus' resurrection is too good. Could it be that Jesus is alive? Could that actually be true? Because if Jesus is truly alive, think about it. If Jesus is truly alive, that means that no one and nothing can ever or will ever be the same. If Jesus is alive, he's sitting with you in your car right now. That means that nothing can ever or will ever be the same. Jesus is in your house, in your living room, in your kitchen. Everywhere that you go, the resurrected Jesus goes. Now you tell me that life can never or will ever be the same. If indeed Jesus is resurrected and alive and out in the world and on the loose, and Jesus is, that means many things for all people. For one, it means how you earn and save and invest and spend money is governed by generosity, not accumulation. If Jesus is resurrected and out in the world and on the loose, that means that your welcome, embrace, and love for all of humanity is unconditional, not arbitrary according to some criteria that you name because you're uncomfortable with it. If indeed Jesus is alive and out in the world and on the loose, that means, and Jesus is, that means that your insistence on and fight for human dignity and justice at all times and in all places for all people is a matter of principle, not convenience. And if Jesus is alive, the resurrected and out in the world and on the loose, that means that your understanding and your appreciation and your participation in Christ Lutheran Church is transformed from going to church for yourself to being the church for other people. Friends and neighbors in Christ, like the unnamed disciples of our scripture today, many in today's world have indeed removed themselves from Jesus' story of resurrection and new life. Life today is back to normal. Our parking lot looks a lot different today than it did last Sunday, doesn't it? Life is back to normal. But others, like Thomas, others are present today asking questions and doubting simply because you desperately want to know that Jesus is alive and will make a difference in your life too. And all of this, the work of the Holy Spirit. Friends and neighbors in Christ, regardless of whether we have removed ourselves physically from the body of Christ or struggled spiritually to be included in the body of Christ, especially during this COVID challenging times, the resurrected Jesus breaks all barriers, proclaiming Easter's words to each and every one of you.
looking each of every one of you straight into the eyes with passion and kindness and generosity. And Jesus says to you, peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's what Jesus said to those who came to sprinkle him with spices to mask the stench of his failed ministry. Peace be with you, Jesus said. It's what Jesus said to those who had given up, disappeared, cowered in fear and lost hope. Peace be with you. It's what Jesus said to Cleopas and Peter and the other disciples when he revealed himself to them in the breaking of the bread. Peace be with you. It's what Jesus said to Thomas who wanted reassurance that indeed Jesus was resurrected. Peace be with you. And it's what Jesus says to each and every one of you this morning in whatever state or predicament or situation you might find yourself or imagine yourself to be in. Listen to those Easter words from Jesus' lips himself. Peace be with you. Peace be with you is also what Jesus will say to you every time you find yourself ruled by fear or anxiety or confusion or hopelessness. Peace be with you. And it's what Jesus says to the whole world, whether we are present and listening yet or not. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Apostle Paul in his congregational letter to the Philippians says it this way. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Friends and neighbors in Christ, peace, that peace, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace of Easter, the peace of the resurrected Jesus, the peace of the out in the world Jesus, the peace of the in the world, out the, the on the loose Jesus out in the world, that peace, that peace be with you all. Amen. Our worship continues in song.
Let us process our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our worship continues with the liturgy for prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Easter faith. Admittedly, there are times when we feel like we might be losing our faith or that faith is waning. The vigor or the integrity or the passion, the zeal for faith disappearing or slipping away. But it's the same gift of faith that proclaims and reminds and encourages us that we don't keep the faith, but it's rather that the gift of faith keeps us. Let us withdraw from the busyness of the world, from our calendars, from our schedules, from our to-do list, from our bullet points. Let us simply spend a few moments meditating on the reality that God's gift of Easter faith, that is Christ crucified, resurrected, and promised to come again. God's promise keeps us, and there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. We pray together. Let us pray for Christ Lutheran congregation and all congregations of faith throughout the world. Cause us to stop asking the question, what's in this church for me? By the power of your Easter gospel, transform that question into what's in me for Christ's church. We pray together. the Easter gospel is intended for all people. By the power of the Spirit, each and every one of us gathered and participating in this worship have been filled with the good news of Christ's gift of peace for all people. Each and every one of us also knows at least one person out in the world who would benefit from hearing these same words, peace be with you. We pray and we lift up the marginalized, the weak, the people struggling in faith. 
but let us even pray more boldly today that somehow you and I figure into the gospel proclamation. Serving our neighbors is not the work of angels. Serving our neighbors and giving them the gospel of peace and the gospel of joy and the gospel of hope is our call. God's work, our hands, we pray together. For whom and what else do God's people pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, you have heard the prayers and the petitions of your children. Receive them in grace and mercy. Act on them in hope and justice out in the world according to your good, holy, and perfect wisdom. We ask all these things, whatever else you see that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our worship continues with the liturgy for tithes and offerings. Easter worship continues with the eating portion of our liturgy, beginning with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As a sign that through the gift of faith we recognize in this meal, Christ present to forgive us of our sins. But more than that, Christ is present in this meal to fill us to overflowing. So that as we go about our ordinary lives out in a broken world, everyone that we encounter experiences Christ's words, peace be to you. And everyone that we encounter, we see the face of Christ in them. Let us together pray the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, eat and drink. The table is prepared for you because God loves you. Peace be with you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues with the communion prayer. We pray together. Well, well spring, spring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive now the sending blessing. May our glorious Easter God grant you the spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our worship continues in song, Go in peace and serve the Lord. We sing together. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.